It's a huge undertaking, these long distance races, because so much goes on. In the early days, Peter Gregg and myself um, drove those races with just the two of us driving, Peter and myself. We had a crew of four guys, and we slept in the back of the trailer. Nowadays, though, it's sort of evolved into a huge operation. Because we've been doing this for such a long time, um, we've just been able to learn from our mistakes that we've made in the early years and sort of make as trouble-free a race as we possibly can for these, these this new generation of 24-hour races, which is very strenuous. I mean, it really is, is a hard race. These races, even though the 24-hour time frame remains the same, what goes on in that during that 24-hour race is hugely different and much more stressful on everybody, the team, the crew, the drivers, the car, you know, there's just a lot of stress, but we all prepare for that and, and you, you just have to have all the uh, T's crossed and the I's dotted to be s successful. Daytona is a really special place. It also is the home of the most important race that we race in in the States, 24 hours of Daytona. And I think that most of the drivers, regardless of who they are, all the guys that come over from the Indy side, from the sports car side, from Formula One, they all are there for one reason, and that's to win that Rolex watch. And it doesn't make any difference how much money they, they make or how much they're worth. They want that watch because that watch is a, is a badge of honor when you win that from, from Daytona. The race is, you know, so unique in 24 hours. It's only a few of these big 24-hour races in the world each year. And Daytona is certainly one of the top ones. So there's so much pressure. It's the beginning of the season, uh, beginning of the racing season, really, all over the world, and being right there at the end of January. So everybody's there. Uh, all the drivers are, are pumped up, ready to go. Everybody, you know, everybody looking at you in the world uh, in, in that situation. So the pressure for the 24 and is uh, pretty deep. Driving at Daytona is a very special feeling, uh, and one is because of the history behind it. And every driver that, that's that's won championships, world championships, the big races, whether it's in America or in Europe or all across the world, has driven at Daytona. So you feel that history there. Practice is extremely important, and these guys spend a lot of time practicing. The Brumos crew are or practicing stops on a regular basis. Only every time we come in during practices, uh, they're, they're practicing stops, but also when we get back to the paddock, uh, any extra time is normally filled up with, with pit stop practice to make sure the guys are comfortable coming over the walls with the, with the wheels, uh, using the actual wheel guns, fueling the car up, stopping the car in the right spot. All those things are very, very important.
The 24 Hours of Daytona is so different to all other races, especially in our series, because the amount of preparation, the intensity that has to go into this race is off the charts high. Ultimately, you know, the driver is just a small part of this, and so much more of it is the crew and how much time they've taken to get the car ready. I wish that more people could actually see what does go into it because for me it's the impressive part. It's a, it's a group of people coming together to make this happen. And I think that this race, it, it's so difficult to do well in. The thing I miss most is that time that's maybe 45 minutes before you actually start the engine up to start the race. You have all these things that are going through your head. I mean, you know, am I up to the task today? Am I fast enough? Have I done everything I'm supposed to do? And, you know, just running these lists in your mind. And it's just a really, you know, nervous butterflies in your stomach. And I, I miss that kind of that, that feeling where you have just this big, huge adrenaline rush. You're, you're ready, you're tense, you're, you're trying to calm yourself down. And I think that that feeling is really unique. I think that that feeling, it, many sports athletes feel that same, same way. But the driving part, I miss the driving. I, I miss the competition, but you know, you got to draw the line in the sand sometime. And uh, when I had my 40th start, that was the clean break for me. The calmest I ever am is actually on the grid. And that goes in my normal life as well. When I'm sitting in the car before a race, that's when I'm at my most calm and my heart rate's at its lowest. At Daytona, it's amazing because at that moment, that's my first moment of peace, probably for about a week prior to that. As a starting driver, uh, obviously, um, my, my job is to bring the car back for the, for the first round of driver changes and also to try and build gaps and, and make up space as, as you can. Um, although it is a 24-hour race, drivers want to get up front. Um, so people make, take chances that you wouldn't think they would at the start. So it's really survival with the first couple laps. So you really have to play that game smart the first few laps until it spreads out. And then the race mentality kind of changes from that point. At the first stint, it's usually kind of the, the hardest, I guess you could say, because you kind of, once you kind of get that one out of the way, uh, you kind of get in the flow and, and, and get kind of relaxed and calm down and, and kind of go from there.
Okay, you got the pass around, you got the pass around. Copy. One of the things that separate great championship winning drivers from just the normal guy is, is the ability to adapt to change. So you're going to have totally different um, environment from hour to hour really. And from a full you know, tank of gas car to a you know, couple gallons left, I mean you're, you're going to have to deal with all kinds of different handling issues. You adapt to traffic situations, you adapt to different driving styles of other of your competitors. And the guys that adapt to that the, the quickest are the ones that are gonna win the race. One of my favorite things as a driver is driving at night. I love the 2 a.m., 3 a.m. stints. Uh, it's really relaxed, actually. Everything's kind of calmed down. It's much cooler. Uh, it seems to be quieter. For me, it's more of a calm uh, sensation inside the car, a almost kind of relaxing and almost kind of rejuvenating or just, just to just a special, special. I mean, when you're when you're in a race car going flat out at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., um, there's nowhere you know there's nowhere in the else in the world like that. And it's just uh, something something special at that point. You have to prepare yourself mentally and physically for the 24 hours of Daytona. Putting yourself through a situation where you're, you have to be that active and that focused for 24 hours is taxing to the human body and the human brain. I think it's an amazing task for the human brain and it's amazing to see how it can actually adapt and do that and, uh, and actually perform at such a high level at something for so long when it's sleep deprived. After a stint, it can be a bit surreal. It's very intense inside the car and, and you're working very hard at a, at a very specific goal. And then you get out and you kind of have freedom. You've got freedom from the confines of the race car, uh, being strapped in for that long and, and being hot and, and thirsty sometimes. You know, you're, it's just a relief physically to get out. Besides all the logistics and the spares, it's a grinder, and you got to come into this thing knowing it's a grinder. Um, anything can go wrong. Anything can happen. You think that you're done when the sun comes up. It used to be that way when the race started, maybe at 11 o'clock in the in the morning. Um, but but the sun comes up, you still got a whole day to race. You got to run till 3:30 in the afternoon. It just takes so much. You've got to have like you've got to have like three of everything to be competitive in this. You've got to be ready for anything. 
And it used to be in those days, you could just come here and unload and race, and everybody broke down a little bit, but it's who picks the car the best made it through the race, you know? Now, it's everybody comes here and runs qualifying laps for 24 hours. So, I mean, you've got to be on your game like you're running a three-hour sprint race. Why they call it the 24 hours of Daytona, I have no clue, because it starts at seven o'clock in the morning for us on Saturday morning. The race doesn't start till 3.20 and you're already wore out or 3.30 and not over till the next day, but you just kind of get that second win. It's the, kind of the adrenaline thing, I suppose. Last year was special because it was Hurley's last race. And uh, it probably meant more than anything to me to put Hurley in the car, in the lead, and an hour later he brings it back and I take him out of the car and he was still in the lead. So uh, I figure if Hurley still got it a little bit, I, I could still get it. As I go all over the country and the world for that matter, you know, people write me and they come up to me and they say, you know, I was just a little kid when I came to the first race to watch you, you know, and, and I followed your career for my whole entire life. And so that, that, that's meaningful to me that you're able to impact somebody um, to have a fan for, you know, 40, 40 years. That makes you feel good. That makes you say, you know, my career behind the wheel of, of a car has meant something to, to people. I thought I would really miss not, not driving, but I really like the, the coaching part of it for our drivers and sort of give them insight that I might have that might help them get do a better job for the 24 hours. You listen to Hurley and you're gonna be in a good spot because he's been through it all. So it's, it's, it's really nice to have such a strong um, person there to help us along. It's helped Lee and I immensely and it's a big, big, uh, a big part of our championship and our race win. You, you kind of forget, I mean, he's a pretty low-key, laid-back guy and, and I mean, it's just unbelievable what he's done. So when you think about that, you're kind of blown away and at first I was really kind of nervous around him because I was, you know, a three-time Le Mans winner, five-time Daytona winner, so that's all I saw, but now, you know, he's just a good friend, and he's been unbelievable amount of help to us. You know, he's been right there for us the whole way. To get the phone call from Hurley Haywood, my childhood hero, asking if I wanted to become part of the Brumos team as a driver, literally floored me. It really does kind of bring everything full circle, and I went from being that starry-eyed little kid watching Hurley and watching Brumos cars race around to now being a driver for Brumos and being uh, you know in that Brumos driver suit and upholding the legend and the history of the famous number 59. It's, it's amazing. It's something I hold very dear, something I feel is very important uh, to, to hold that honor. It's a very, it's, it's, it is an honor to be selected as that driver and I think Lee and I both feel that same way and why we, we work so hard to to uphold the, the icon. Sit now for driver change, driver change, fuel and tires. Please undo the belt for Andrew, loosen the belt for Andrew. Reset fuel, Andrew, radio check, reset fuel. Copy. Full course yellow, full course yellow. Copy, EMS one. 